Hi, I'm Helen Vivian Fletcher, one of the authors from the Blood from a Stone Twisted Villains anthology. And I am really excited today because my copy has arrived. Oh, and that's backwards, that's okay. You can probably still get an idea of the cover. Um, I am in New Zealand, uh, hence my accent. And uh, so it's taken a little while for this one to arrive, um, but I'm super excited to have it in my hands now. Um, if you want your own copy of the Twisted Villains anthology, uh, you can grab that off Amazon um, or any of the other ebook re retailers. Uh, it's just 99 cents, and I'll drop the link in the comments. Um, but uh, and if you have already got your copy and you've read it. Um, I would really love it if you'd be able to leave a review of that one. Um, that would really help me and the other authors of the anthology out. Reviews really do make a huge difference um, in, in helping us to find readers. And um, you may have also heard the rumour that if we get 50 reviews, uh, we get our own unicorns. So, you know, we'd let you, um, we'd let you pet them if you helped us out with that. Um, but in the meantime, um, I thought I would read a little from the story that I wrote for this anthology. I chose The Boy Who Cried Wolf as my villain, and so my story is called The Boy Who Cried. You probably already think you know my story. You've probably judged me, decided I got what I deserved. You're not alone. That's what most people think. My story is told as a cautionary tale, even. You know what happened to the boy who cried wolf, mothers say, when they catch their children lying. But there's one piece of the story you're missing. I didn't lie. There really was a wolf. Billy, get up! I groaned and pulled the ragged blanket closer around myself. The afternoon sun streamed through the window, but I squeezed my eyes tighter, ignoring it. Billy! My mother ripped the cover off me, slapping the back of my head with the, back of, with the flat of her hand. I cracked my eyes open. Get up, you lazy boy, she yelled again. I swung my legs over the side of the bed and rubbed my head, ruffling up my hair. My mother's face softened. I made you some breakfast. It's on the table. She left me to get dressed. I pulled on my warmest woolen coat, watching through the window as the sun crept down behind the hills. Last night the farmer hadn't returned until mid-morning, so I'd not got to bed until noon. Mother may like to blame laziness, but these days I got less sleep than her. She'd left a bowl of oatmeal on the table. I picked up a spoon, diving it into the gloopy mixture, then letting it fall back down into the bowl in globs. Breakfast was not quite the same when you were starting your shift at 5pm. From the stove, I could smell a stew slowly cooking. She would try to save some for me, but as the little ones were hungry, after they'd had eaten their meagre share, she'd be hard-pressed to keep it from them. Usually their starved cries got to her, and she doled it out between them. On those mornings she'd give me a hard-faced shrug when I returned home, unable to feel yet another layer of guilt on top of the ones she already carried with her daily. I didn't mind, really. Since living with the sheep, I'd been less and less inclined to eat meat. And besides, I knew she deprived herself far more than any of us. Her cheeks had grown hollow, the lined wasting of her flesh caused by more than just age. She pulled a hat down on my head and over my eyes. Be careful out there tonight, Billy. I pushed the hat back so I could see. I always am. She stared at me, the guilt spilling over again. It'll only be for a couple more months. He'll be home soon. She turned back to the stove, stirring the pot. It didn't need it. The stew was more liquid than substance. She muttered to herself as if she could conjure a meal with mere words. She'd been saying my father would be home soon for nearly a year. He went out in search of better work months ago and we'd heard little of him since. I'd found a job helping a farmer watch over his sheep in the hopes that we would, wouldn't starve before my mother accepted he was gone for good. I touched her arm as I got ready to leave. She looked up at me, the dark circles under her eyes matching the ones under mine. Get some sleep tonight, Ma. I gave her thin arm a squeeze. She nodded, though I knew she wouldn't. In the months since my father left, she'd been possessed with a nervous energy that left her pacing and restless. I could see the exhausted madness growing behind her eyes, just waiting to spill over. Try bring home some wool, she said. I nodded. The snags I pulled from the bushes wouldn't amount to much. 
She had dreams of spinning it, as if the small income she would get from selling it would make a difference. I didn't tell her otherwise. Everyone needed a little hope. Um, so that's the start of my story, The Boy Who Cried, um, and you can read that one and all the fabulous other stories uh, in the Blood from a Stone Twisted Villains anthology, um, and I am really excited to get started reading the rest of them tonight. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, yep, go grab your copy. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> thanks. Bye.